Good evening and welcome to coverage of the Ward 5 City Council race here in the City of Champions. Um, Brockton Community Access, my name is Mark Lindy and we're partnering with uh, WXBR Radio. Uh, my colleague Ron Van Dam, thank you for being here, Ron. You're very welcome. Um, we're going to have each of the candidates uh, be able to uh, let you know about their, their background. They'll have an opening statement, a closing statement. We'll have a series of questions. Uh, they'll get a chance to uh, answer each other and depend, time permitting, they may even get a chance to ask each other a question. Um, we're going to start with opening statements and uh, all three candidates were invited. All three candidates are here. Thank you for coming. Um, we drew ballot order uh, not ballot order, I should say. We drew opening statement order and closing statement order. So the person that shows the first opening statement is Ann Beauregard. So Ann, uh, look at the camera that has the red light and give your opening statement, whichever one's on at the time. Okay. Hi, I'm Ann Beauregard and I'm running for Ward 5 City Council. Uh, my background includes, well, graduating from Broughton High, like an awful lot of lucky people, in 1976. I'm still part of Broughton High as an um, alumni um, officer for the BHS Alumni Association. Uh, my background includes a degree in marketing, a bachelor's in finance, uh, and a, a master's certificate in, um, in women in politics and public policy, and a professional certificate in nonprofit management. I have had several years of experience in uh, banking and the stock market and the business world, and my most recent experience has been more involved with nonprofits and grant writing, advocacy, and fundraising. I'm running for Ward 5 City Council because I want to be part of the solution. I've been involved with the city for many years now in a variety of different capacities from the Broughton Library Foundation to the Adult Learning Center Advisory Board, to several other organizations. Time. Thank you. Okay, next uh, we have uh, Dennis Denathley. Uh, thank you very much, Ron and Mark, for uh, having this forum tonight. Good evening, folks. Uh, my name is Dennis Denathley. I am your Ward 5 City Council, and I've had the privilege of serving you as a full-time city councilor uh, in Ward 5 for the past 14 years. And uh, during my tenure, I have served as council president, chairperson of the following, public safety, accounts, real estate, finance, ordinance, and also traffic. As your city councilor, I have worked hard bringing new business into Ward 5 and helping retain existing businesses staying in the city. 14 years gives me the experience to be an effective city councilor. You still have time. Thank you. Uh, Ten seconds. Please, please consider me on September 17th as your uh, city councilor, full-time city councilor, Dennis Denapley. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dennis. Um, Ollie Spears. Hello, my name is Ollie Spears. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ollie Spears, and I live on the city, uh, the east side of Broughton, and I'm running for Ward 5 city councilor, and I'm asking for your vote on September 17th. I'm a lifelong Broughtonian. I'm married for eight years, three daughters. I go to Downing School. And I'm running for accessibility, accountability, and also on public safety. You want a city councilor that returns your phone calls and you know who he is. That's why I'm running for city, uh, Ward, Ward 5 city councilor. Thank you, Ollie. Okay, uh, we will mix up the order as we go along. Uh, so question number one is uh, Mr. Ron Van Dam. What can realistically be done in Ward 5 and in neighborhoods across the city to make them safer? Okay, and the order for this one is Ollie Spears first. I'm glad you asked. Um, basically, what it, it, it's grassroots. So I, I want to work, I want to grow what we have now with the Neighborhood Watch and go across the Ward 5 and br break it down to the precincts and have cap uh, precinct captains and also Break, break up the neighborhoods and neighborhoods associations, break up the precincts, break up the different communities, and make it a grassroots effort. You know, a community that works together is unified. So that's what, so, you, you know, we could call on the police, they're more of being reactive, but as a community, we could be proactive, you know. So that's what, that's what I want to work on. Neighborhood Watch and um, neighborhood associations, grassroots. Thank you, Ollie. Um, Ann? Same question, next. 
Sure, okay, to, to increase uh, safety in the community, it's definitely without a doubt communication and people feeling included in part of the solution. I agree with uh, my uh, associate here that uh, part of the solution is continued um, organization with neighborhood watches and communicating with uh, the individuals and their concerns. I believe safety is a variety of different things from just the way a traffic uh, light you know, um, interacts with um, major intersection to how people feel with well-lit streets, uh, blessed potholes, and again, activity going on in the streets. To me, it starts in the schools and in the families, and that's what I hope to communicate to everyone. Thank you. Um, Dennis? Thank you, Mark. Well, it's, it, it is all about uh, being a good neighbor, being a watchdog in the neighborhood. And uh, for the past 14 years, I have started up Prime Watches in Ward 5. We had an incident in uh, Ward 5 on the south side of Ward 5, and we had a meeting at the uh, Mary Baker School. It was well attended. It was on cable. And it was well advertised, and we got a good response on it. And we started up a neighborhood crime watch in that particular neighborhood. Neighborhood crime watches are, have to stay on that particular street. You don't combine the whole neighborhood. It's street by street in Ward 5, and that's what we do. Just like the meeting we had the other night over at the uh, unknown school, we, uh, we try to get uh, people to sign up for crime watches that night, too. Thank you. Is there any follow-up that any of you need uh, on that one? Um, yes, I definitely have to follow up. Um, before we had the two murders, 14-hour um, span, Mr. DiNapoli wasn't even part of that community meeting. He jumped on the bandwagon after that. Okay. Uh, would you like to respond to that? How can you respond that I was not part of that? Just like, I'm I'm, I just, I'm, I just I'm talked to the TV and I told him. Okay, the okay. It's no, not, I, I, I totally disagree with you. Okay. You know, I mean, you're a, you're a new neighbor in the ward. You mm -hmm. have no idea what I've been doing for 14 years. You lived in Ward 7. Yeah, for a year. Well, you didn't live in Ward 5. Okay, okay. we're not, we're not going <laughs> to go back and forth. I'll just let you guys address it one at a time. Yeah, one at and time, did you one have time. anything that you wanted to add to that? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I walk the ward so I know it's safe. I walk all over the city and early in the morning till early evening at dusk. There is a, it's safe in many areas. And it's a part of being alert and involved and just saying hi to people. There's plenty of people out there walking and feeling safe. There's definitely issues we need to address, and I believe a lot of them are a case-by-case -case basis, certainly. Okay, thank you. We will uh, move on to question number two, Ron. What is your position on the proposed power plant in Brockton, and why? Okay, the first one would be, on uh, this one would be in. Okay, I'm vehemently opposed to the uh, power plant and have been since the beginning for several reasons. One, uh, primarily, is because certainly the health safety, and here we want to talk about public safety, the idea of a power plant of that magnitude being in a community as populated as ours near Main Streets, schools, elderly housing, and uh, a facility for those that are, um, have serious brain injuries is by far a real threat to the community. That's that's a public concern, number one. Number two, I don't believe that in the future we're going to be using fossil fuel, and yes, I know that this is supposed to be gas-powered to the extent that we are. I believe we need to look at other ideas and learn from others, and I, I just don't believe that that's completely good. And also, I know you're going to cut me off, but let's remember that that power plant and that energy is not going to be used to this community, and that concerns me the most. Made the time. That's great. Okay, uh, Dennis. Oh, thank you, Mark. I have been in, in opposition to the power plant from day one when this all started about uh, six years ago, and also have uh, funded through the city council the monies to fight this with attorneys. So uh, I am in opposition to the power plant. Okay, Ollie. I'm against the power plant. Um, talk with several neighbors, talk with people in the ward, and they're against it. And personally, I'm against it. My wife and all three of my children are asthmatic. And bringing more junk into the city, like the power plant, and um, will, will definitely hurt the quality of life and the quality of the air. So I'm definitely against it. Okay. Uh, all three are in common on this. Mm -hmm. uh, any follow-up or additional information needed? No. Okay. I'll go into question three, Ryan. Sure. Um, 
We ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, how would you raise revenue for the city? Uh, people talk about putting more safety patrol officers on the streets and building the cities in other ways, going toward into infrastructure, but nobody really talks about how this would be paid for. Uh, bringing, bringing businesses into Brockton, obviously, but that doesn't happen either. So how do you improve a city and meet rising costs that go up every year in a city of this size uh, without raising taxes? Okay, first up on this would be uh, Dennis. Well, thank you very much, Mark. Good question, Ron. Um, in Ward 5, a couple of examples. Uh, I have supported uh, businesses in this city that were supposed to move out of the city to, to move into other communities, and we, we, we retained those businesses in the city. We have new businesses coming into Ward 5. We have uh, a brand new Cumberland Farms that will be uh, breaking ground very shortly across the street from the east side firehouse. Uh, also, JLS Systems is, is a, a brand new business in, uh, on the east side. And, uh, and we have a, a barbecue, a boot seat barbecue from Revere, Massachusetts that will be moving into the city. It's a manufacturing company. And will, it'll bring revenue and about 25 jobs into the city. And I was part of that. So I'm trying to do my job as a city councilor to bring new business into the city. Thank you, Dennis. Um, Ollie, next. Yes, definitely. I think raising revenue, you have to do private sector and also pub, um, through the public. Um, changing the downtown by, you know, we might have to spend some money to make some money. Um, just the whole infrastructure downtown. The downtown is our heart and it's part of the Ward 5. So we need to um, switch it to the two-way. We need to bring, um, fix some of the abandoned buildings. And maybe if, the, if we could find money, maybe we fix them up, the city, and rent them out. We're already a landlord at the at the um, the baseball stadium. Maybe we could make make some money and, and get some tenants and some buildings. Um, and also, like Dennis said, bring bring businesses in. Um, I'll pick up the phone personally and call different businesses, different corporations, and try and get them more to the east side. Thank you, um, Ann. Okay. Question? Well, first of all, you know my background is um, accounting. And um, I say these words all the time, audit and accountability. First of all, we need to know how the departments are working in this city. It's not to say they're working poorly. It's simply to say, are they working to the maximum that they can? Do they have enough people in all the departments to continue serving this city and grow with this city? And I'm mentioning that because that's immediately where the costs go. So maybe that's part of, it's always that we need to bring revenue in. There's no doubt in my mind that we need to bring revenue in. How do we do that? Well, first of all, I've been involved with the Metro South Chamber of Commerce for almost 15 years now. And we're always connecting with small businesses, large businesses, to, con to see their need and their connection to bringing uh, their um, success to our community. I could continue to elaborate, but the uh, buzz has gone off here on uh, other issues. Okay, well, I will let each of you have another minute on that because it's very important in terms of economic development for the city. So, Ann, you can continue. Okay. I'm that. also uh, with the Downtown Broughton Association, as um, everyone's mentioned here. Yeah, downtown is the heart of Broughton. It's not going to go back to where it was when we were kids. Like everything else, things change. But it can still become an area that is conducive to not only being uh, welcoming for residents, but also for small businesses. In particular, I cite um, several businesses that have been popping up locally, one of them that's doing quite well right now, and connecting with the community and working with other individuals to have activities downtown. We have a successful parade every year, but we don't um, just have uh, one holiday that we need um, events at. We have several going on. That's bringing people back into the city. That's giving a positive reflection to downtown. Okay, uh, same, uh, if you have anything more to add, Ollie? Definitely. Definitely, I spoke about the private sector, so definitely we bring some, some investors in to re, re, uh, revitalize the downtown. I think we're definitely, um, we'll put, give that punch to the city that needs uh, um, to bring the city back with um, the downtown area. Also bring some investors um, in the private sector up on, um, on, the, on the, Crescent, um, the Crescent Street sector. Um, the old 508 club that needs to be revitalized. Um, and like I said, I'll be the ambassador of the east side. I'll make phone calls and 
you'll be able to call me and I'll return your phone call. Thank you. Uh, Dennis? Thank you, Mark. Um, speaking about the downtown, we have uh, uh, the uh, Trinity Financial Group is uh, going to be break, breaking ground in, uh, in October, and it's a $100 million project for new, uh, new housing downtown, as well as businesses that will be on the first floor and lofts. We also have the Lincoln Building, which is across the street from the Brockton Post Office that uh, Brophy Phillips is uh, remodeling, and that's going to bring in uh, some new businesses. And uh, we also have the D'Angelo's building that's vacant on, on the Montello Street. I've met with the owners, and that is a project that's going to bring in about $80,000 worth of taxes. We also have uh, the, uh, the Knight building, which is underway right now, and that's going to be lofts. So we are trying to do something downtown. We're trying to bring people into the downtown. You know, a lot of businesses bought buildings eight, five, six, seven, eight years ago that are in the downtown that have been empty for five years. They're all underwater. And the city can't help these people Time. because they're underwater. Okay. Next question, Rock. What are some ideas that you may have in the sense of uh, introducing ordinances and, and uh, bills to the council? Uh, in the sense of uh, perhaps image of the city. Let's go there. Uh, many buildings are abandoned. The facades are falling apart. Uh, we have sometimes homeless uh, on the streets uh, collecting monies, uh, people congregating. Uh, the image that the city has, uh, has has affected the entire area. Uh, we know of people in other cities, even in New Hampshire, who are quite aware of Brockton's problems. Uh, image seems to be very important. What ordinances would you put into effect uh, in order to make the city look better, to change its course as far as image is concerned? First up on this is Ollie. Definitely. Well, uh, the first thing I would do, um, I know when the, when the snow removal in the wintertime, the, res the resident has to go all the way to the, this, um, the curb. So during the summertime, I think the residents should go all the way to the curb, make sure they're weeding, they're weeding the, the sidewalks, cleaning up um, the trash in, in front of that house. Um, I think that goes a long way. Um, also work with the city because, you know, they, they just put the, they just fixed the bridges over on um, Center Street, um, over Crest Street. They, they planted the trees and already they have, it's um, overgrown with trash, trash all around it. So I'll definitely work with, you know, the, um, the DPW, make sure we're cleaning up the areas, um, but definitely have the citizens go all the way to the curb. That helps, and do I have a little more time? And that I want to, if I get more time, we'll talk about the homelessness too, but I'll talk about that after. Okay, uh, same question then. Okay. Um First of all, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be involved with Broughton Interfaith Community, and one of the ordinances, uh, they've been involved with several programs to address the foreclosure issue. It's no secret that we had in both zip codes the highest foreclosure rate in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So working with the community and individuals with ideas and solutions to help create ordinances. I'm, I'm a strong proponent of inclusivity, and that begins with asking individuals what they want to see differently. Myself, I walk all over this city and I have witnesses. And to attest to it, one of the things I'm so sick of is all these plastic balls that I'm now guilty of drinking out of all over the place. So I look forward and I have worked in the past with our senator and I followed up with our reps to do something about the um, water bottle um, and other plastic bottle uh, Re, um, redemption to help clean clean it up. So that's one of, like, Ollie, I would like to go back to that question. It's a huge one. Okay. Um, Dennis. Thank you, Mark. Well, last night at the uh, city council meeting, we just uh, accepted a $100,000 grant from the state and from uh, Registrar John Buckley's office to uh, work on the foreclosure rate in, in Brockton. And what this is going to do is they're going to hire an individual to go look at some of these abandoned homes and we're going to uh, start the process to take these homes back and uh, list them uh, with the Railators and put them back on the market and fix them up. As for the uh, ordinances, I have two ordinances pending right now. I have a clothing bin ordinance that we're trying to clean up the city on, and it's in the ordinance department right now. The other one is abandoned cars, boats, trailers, uh, SUVs, and also I'm trying to include the height of grass 
Now, the, the city of uh, Woonsocket, Rhode Island, has a grass ordinance. If the grass is uh, more than t uh, six or eight inches, 10 inches high, the landlord has to cut it. If not, we'll, uh, we, we, we could go in there and, uh, and fine them for not cutting the grass. But this takes time to pass an ordinance, and you need 11 time. votes on the city council. Thank you. Okay, uh, since two of the three of you asked for more time, you get your wish. So we'll uh, let Dennis continue, and then we'll go in reverse oh, order. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, to pass an ordinance, it takes a long time. I've had these two ordinances in, in, in the workings now for about six or seven months. To pass an ordinance, you have to define every single word that is in there because if it's not corrected, you can get sued and there's legal action taken. So we have a, a uh, Mark Day is our legal counsel that represents the city. Everything goes through Mark. Mark will turn it upside down, right side up, and whatever guidelines he puts on the, the ordinances that we uh, try to amend uh, in the city of Brockton, that's what Mark does for us. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go to uh, Ann. Okay, I wanted to get back to Ron's part about imaging. First of all, I wanted to, to set, um, you mentioned about the homeless, and that is a, you know, a serious concern, and, but it's a lot more involved. We're not the only ones with that concern, and I believe one of the situations I'm so pro is working with institutions of higher learning and also reviewing what other cities and towns do to address those concerns. When we get back to ordinances, for example, you mentioned the panhandling. We have a lot of discussions about that at Downtown Broughton Association, and the police officers explain to us what's legal and what's not, and the individual civil rights. So it's easy to make a statement saying, oh, let's get, pass a law on this, but it, it, as Dennis pointed out, there are so many aspects to consider. To me, it's understanding why we're in that situation in the first place as a nation as far as homeless is concerned. Thank you. Ollie? Um, the other, last Saturday when I was even City Hall for, after the, um, peace, the peace rally, I was walking to my car and I passed and I saw a, a homeless man sitting on the bench and I, and I sat next to him and I started talking to him and I was asking what book he was reading and we had a conversation and I said, um, why, why are you sitting over here? He said, well, you know, I'm homeless and I feel safer over here at downtown versus Needle Park. And Needle Park is right next to where... Um, Mainspring is. He said, I'd rather sit here because there's too much stuff going on. It's crazy. So I said to myself, we need to do something. We need to be able to clean this park up. Um, if people are violating any laws, we need to, we need to get them out, out of there. Um, so that's definitely something I would like to work on. Um, homelessness is there. Um, we can't fix everything, but at least we can make it a safe environment where some, some homeless people need to be. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask uh, the next question. Um, what would you do as a city councilor to keep the public informed? I'm going to let Ann take this one first. Oh, thank you. Well, I uh, believe in being out and about in the community, and, and I am out and about in the community, bring in, bringing out the information. I'm fortunate enough to be on WXBR for a couple of minutes every Friday to highlight the good things because, again, we wanted to talk about image, and there's a whole lot of good things going on. Sometimes that gets lost with the concerns and not to ever downplay the serious concerns we have in this community. Another way I believe in is talking to people face to face. And I interact with people continuously, whether it's walking down the street, being involved with the various uh, events and programs and nonprofits that I'm involved with in the community. I also use the paper. I'm known for doing my letters to the editor, and I will continue to do so. As far as phone calls go, I had 12 before I came here, and I answered 10. So I thought that was pretty good in a short span and continue to do so. Thank you. Same question to Dennis. Thank you, Mark. Well, you know, I'm out and about in the community, and I have been for 14 years. Uh, sometimes my wife said to me, when I go to the supermarket, why does it take me two hours to come home? When you, when you meet and greet people and they have issues, you, you address them at the time. And uh, I always return phone calls. And, uh, you know, when there's an important issue that uh, comes up in the ward, I'll have a ward meeting. When there's a crime uh, that happens, uh, on the east side or, or anything at all. It's a water issue, no matter what it is, we'll always get the community involved. You know, I, I, my wife and I, uh, the other day, we, we walked a particular street that was having a, a major problem with uh, some uh, loud noise on the weekends and parties and whatnot, and uh, we, we addressed that issue. 
And that's what it's about, getting out in the community and, and, and helping out. And I've done that for quite a long time. Okay, Ollie, same question. Well, the residents of Ward 5, you have me to thank, you, thank for that. Um, now that he has competition, he's been out in the neighborhoods walking door to door. But let's, let's get back to it. What I would do, I would do ward meetings once a month, um, have everybody come in, and it will be a, a roundtable discussion where we have everybody talk. Um, and I make sure that it's on my Facebook. I make sure it's on my website. I make sure that every citizen in Ward 5 is informed. Thank you. Uh, rebuttal? Yes. Uh, I, uh, go ahead. Okay, thank you. I'd like to go over that with the communication part. I'm all for ward meetings. I, I certainly don't want to discourage those. But I'm real. A lot of people are really busy, and it's hard to get out, and some of them have kids, uh, uh, elderly parents, situations. Some of them are going to college at night, working during the day. I'm a strong proponent of interacting in other ways that, that are possible, whether it's emailing. And now I want to try to attempt Skype. I'm not you know, necessarily a pro in the technology area. And I also um, volunteer for Broughton Community Access outside of Broughton Community Access, taping the different events that go on. And somehow that, to me, brings out all the positives that are going on and lets people know about different things go going on. So that, I, I feel, is just another avenue to bring out, you know, communicating and certainly open to others, tweeting, et cetera, as that uh, time goes on. Thank you. Dennis, did you want to follow up? on that one? No. No, okay. I'm just going to uh, ask you a follow-up, actually all three of you, and just touched upon it. I'm curious to know when originally Ann was listing her priorities, cable wasn't one of them. I'm just asking, we have a government channel, we have a public channel, and we have an educational channel. Mm -hmm. It is available for elected officials to use. Would you use it? Yes, I would. But I, or, I already do um, in, in a variety of different instances. But I would do it, I believe, with interacting with something else. For example, like I have in the past, if there's a different positive event going on. I have also taped with the new grants that have been coming through the city and the forums they've had, certainly on the revitalization and renovation of City Hall. We covered those two um, open to the public events. I taped those. I taped some others. I'm going to clear this up right now. I'm by no stretch of the imagination an expert. So yes, I miss people's heads heads and you know don't always get everything <laughs> and I have a lot of um, patient people here that help me edit but what what I'm saying is this is it just another avenue and for some people it can't get out a little challenge or the weather is not in their favor it's just another avenue to bring out valuable information so been using it for some time and plan on continuing to do so Dennis when I was council president in 2006 I was the first spokesman for the city council to go on the radio and we did that every, uh, every Monday before city council meeting and every Tuesday morning, both uh, uh, with, the, the, with the former uh, employees that were at the station at the time. Uh, I don't know if it's being done today, but uh, it, it was done in the past, and I'd like to see it get done again. Uh, I'm always calling Ron's show with, with information, and when people say that I'm, uh, I'm not available, I just, it just profounds me to say that, you know, I'm out in the community all the time. If there's one person that's out there giving information, I have a website, it's called DennistonAppley.com. It's up and running, it's all kinds of information on it. I'm on the radio, and I, I have regular ward meetings when, when there are major, major issues out there. Thank you, Ollie? Yes, um, I think it's a great, a great asset. Um, during the public meeting the other day, I called up the, the TV station, and I asked if it was gonna be um, live or um, tape because I know a couple of people want to watch in their handicap and they couldn't make it. So I, I think it's definitely a great asset. Definitely a great asset. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ron? It's a little bit of a confusing question, but an important one. And I, I ask everybody, every candidate for city council, the same question. And that is that the people in your ward vote for you based on what you're saying here, your opinions, your ideas. At the same time, you're voted in to represent them fully, to take their ideas and bring them to council. So how do you operate? Which is your mode? Is it your ideas, or is it the ideas of the people that you put into play? First up on that is Dennis. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I, could, I could sum it in, in one sentence. Your concerns are my concerns. 
Okay. Um, Ollie next? Yes, um, power to the people. That's what it's about. They elected me to represent them, so I want, I want to make sure that they're, they're calling me, I'm calling them, and we're having um, a dialogue of any issues or any concerns. So I definitely will listen to um, the residents of Ward 5. Okay. Um, move right on to next question, Ron. Well, and oh, I'm there. sorry, I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We'll do follow-up. <laughs> <Gotcha. laughs> okay. Um, uh, first of all, yes, you represent the individuals in a city, in your ward, and we're, to me, I believe I'm expressing generally fact. Yes, there's concerns here, but throughout all my, you know, participation in various groups, various uh, involvement over the years, you accumulate the, and listen to the concerns of others, having gone knocking on doors, learning things that you hadn't realized before. So no, you're certainly there to represent individuals. I had once told the candidate, if the constituents want the streets painted a different color, that's their concern, that's what you bring and, and, and present. Um, I know that right now the concerns are extensive as far as certainly public safety, et cetera, and those are the concerns you bring and you represent and you work toward solving. Thank you. Dennis? The number one issue in, in, in the city right now is public safety. Public safety has always been a major issue with me from day one. And I'm, you know, um, I'm happy to say back in uh, 2002 to 2004, I helped implement the traffic safety division of this city. We did not have cruisers that were just assigned to, uh, to stop in trucks, any kind of a moving violation, stickers, or mufflers, and all that stuff. And uh, they bring in over a million dollars a year, and that million dollars goes back into the general fund. So I'm very, very proud that I could help implement that particular public safety feature. Okay, thank you. We're gonna go on to the next question, Ron. What makes you qualified to hold this position? How well do you know Ward 5? I'm gonna start with Ollie. Yes. Um, like I said, I was born at the Broughton Hospital. I grew up on Hill Street. I grew up on Stillman Ave. I also lived on Elliott Street, Wendell Ave. Um, so most of my life, I've been on Ward 5. Most of my life, couple, maybe four years I've been out the ward. Um, other than that, the heart and soul, I know my residents, I know my family, I know my friends, and I definitely can represent them to, to, the, to the best of my ability. Okay, Ann? Wow, I moved to Ward 5 in 1962. Um, it's changed a lot since then. Uh, I've, how would I say it, been back and forth. I left college and came back to this community. To me, you're representing the entire community. You're part of the entire community. I know Ward 5 because, first of all, I walk all over Ward 5. Second, I'm involved with the schools. I'm involved with Massasoit Community College. I'm involved with several other programs that have been effective in the community, whether it's Broughton Interfaith Community, whether it's uh, the Community Schools Advisory Board or the Adult Learning Center Advisory Board that I serve on. I understand the needs of the community and I believe that serving them, this is just an extension of what I already do in a different capacity. Thank you, Dennis. Well. I've lived, in four, uh, <laughs> I've lived in Ward 5 44 years and uh, raised three children and, and married to my wife Susan. And uh, I know every single street in this ward. Uh, I fight very, very hard to repave the streets of Ward 5. Uh, for the past 14 years, I can, I can, uh, I can say that uh, more streets have been repaved in Ward 5 than in the history of Ward 5. And not because I've been there longer, you have to fight to get things done in this city. And we have to fight to get Chapter 90 money. And I can say that uh, this year, I am getting two streets done in Ward 5. One is uh, Crestfield Terrace off of Crestfield Drive, and the other one is going to be uh, Drew Avenue, which is directly in back of me. So I'm very, very proud of those two. But uh, you know, I've been involved with the East Side Improvement, the Downey Little League, uh, East Junior High Pack, Cardinal Spellman, you name it, I volunteered I'm a volunteer. I volunteer for everything. Okay, this is a very important question, and it's about your qualifications. So um, it was only a minute. It just touched the surface. Certainly going to allow another minute for everybody if you'd like to have it. Okay. Yes? Mm -hmm. Go. Okay. Um, Dennis. 
Well, I mean, qualifications. Uh, 14 years as a city councilor. You know, I'm proud of it. Um, making, it making improvements. You know, uh, people bump into me all over the place, and they ask me to do this and do that. You know, when you sit on the city council, you're one of 11 votes. And if you need something accomplished, you have to do your homework, and you have to get your fellow councilors to support the issues that you want to bring forward in your particular ward. It's very, very important. You have to work together. If you don't work together, you don't get anything accomplished. And I'm proud to say that I have got a lot of things accomplished in 14 years. Thank you. Ollie? Yes. I'm not a career politician. I haven't been in office in 14 years, but I definitely do my best to represent you and support you. Like I said, in my pamphlet, you go on my website, you could call me, text me, hit me on Facebook, you can knock on my front door at 69 Bud Ave, and I'll answer and I'll help you as best as my ability. Ann? Yes, well, I believe actions speak louder than words, and I believe I've demonstrated for quite some time now that my compassion for the city, my hard work, I've tackled some very sensitive issues over the years, and it's not always glamorous, but you work with people to get things done, whether it's brought into faith community, whether it's a variety of different issues, for example, stop the power, or um, the former trash transfer station that was um, attempted to come to this city. And you're not always greeted uh, positively, and other times you're embraced for speaking up. Um, I believe that my years of experience have demonstrated that I am ready to work and have worked with other individuals in a variety of different capacities. I also believe my education and experience, though I'm not an elected official at this time, have demonstrated and can um, be uh, instrumental in improving and making stronger change for this community. Okay, I want to uh, make sure that we, uh, I, I want to make sure my time, I believe we have about 15 minutes left, yes? We're 23 minutes left. 23, okay. What I'm going to do at this point, since we have a two-minute closing statement, is I'm going to allow each of you to ask each other a question. And that would mean Dennis can ask Ann a question and Ollie. Ollie can ask Ann and Dennis. Um, we may not have time for rebuttal or follow-up, and then you can do your closing statement. Does that work for everybody? Yes. Okay. Yes? Okay. Yes? Okay. Um, so why don't we uh, start with Ollie asking his questions. All right, definitely. Uh, my question is, um, I was watching the debate earlier, and um, Don Carr also mentioned that she was bringing in the barbecue sauce business, Bootsy. So is it you bringing it in, or is it Don Carr bringing in the barbecue sauce business? Okay, that question is from Ollie oh, to Dennis. To Dennis. One I was minute. at the meeting with the mayor's office with Mr. Brown. Okay. So who's bringing it? She bringing it. I was at the in? meeting with the mayor at the office, at the mayor's office. So is she bringing it? You bringing it? I yes. just answered the question. Oh, okay. I'm just well, you know, I'm just okay. asking a question. Sorry about that. I'm just that's that's what I heard earlier. I'm just double checking. I apologize. Okay. Um, question for Ann. Okay, and I can ask. Uh, Paul. No, no, no. Uh, question from Ollie to Ann. Oh, okay. I'm and sorry. then you'll get your turn, and Dennis will get. Okay. Um, question for Ann. I really don't know much about Ann. You don't have a website? I couldn't. I uh, okay, know. well, um, <laughs> I've, um, I actually, I, I didn't know too much about you, so I was curious about yes. a couple of things. What do you want to know about me? Let's see. I've had an extensive amount of experience writing grants for several programs in the city to keep things going. I'm a strong advocate and have been many times to Beacon Hill on several issues that are of concern to this city. I've been responsible for working and to raise a lot of money for both the Broughton Library Foundation, uh, DW Field Park Association, and several other organizations. I believe that all these combined are very advantageous to the community. I'm up there for the kids road races in a very glamorous environment in a shed keying in several hundred um, runners over uh, eight weeks, well 16 weeks of every year. It's my decision to be involved in all these things and I have no regrets. I just wish there were more time the day to do more things for uh, the community. Thank you. Um, Dennis, a question for each of your opponents. Uh, okay, I have a question for uh, Mr. Spears. Yes. Uh, you said that uh, I was a lifetime politician and too old to do my job. No, I never said that. And I said, I, what I said is 
you a career politician, 14 years, and I never say you're too old to do your job. I never said that. First of all, there's no such thing as a career politician. As long as the people in Ward 5 think I'm doing a great job, they will reelect me. Definitely. Well, a career politician, you would probably be trying to go for the blueprint, do the 20 years, and then you can retire with the pension. We, and, and first get, of all, and get the first, um, first of insurance. All, would, okay. There is a very, very little pension at $10,000 a year hey, stipend that we get. Hey, pension is pension, buddy. Okay. Okay. So would, you, so would you donate that back to the community? You can. Would I donate that back to the community? Yes. I, I think I earned that, that money because if you look at what I get paid over the period of, of what I do for the city of Brockton and the constituents of Ward 5, it comes out to, to, to all of you as about 25 cents an hour. Uh, so would question, you donate it? Question for... Would you donate it? Yes or no? No. Okay. I question, think I earn it. Huh? Just question, like you'd be earning if you beat me. Question for Ann. Question Dennis. for Ann? Yes. I really don't have a question for Ann. Ann and I have been uh, friends for a long time, and uh, this, this young lady back in uh, 2002, 2004 helped me get elected. So I really don't have a question for Miss Ann. Okay. Ann, you get a question to each one of your opponents. Okay, well, I'm going to ask Ollie, because I know that he works for Bank of America, um, about working on making it easier for, to do business here in Brockton and to get businesses established. Yes, ma'am. Several people have uh, talked about that concern, and apparently there is many hoops to go through, and it doesn't seem to be advantageous for anyone involved, with it, whether the, the community, the business, or you know, the city itself. So uh, do you have any ideas on that since you're in the banking world? What's the question? Is about, it, is it about Bank of America? Or? No, no, no. It's about helping, since you work for a bank, helping um, businesses in this community. Do you see any, any ideas? Do you have any ideas on helping businesses and the city do business with businesses uh, more easily in the community? Yeah, definitely. Um, my plan would be to put together um, a checklist. When, so when businesses come to City Hall, they know exactly what they need. Okay, you need these 20 things? All right, here's a checklist. Do you need A, B, C, D? Check it off and then they could get their permits versus coming to City Hall, okay, you need this permit. You get the permit and then next thing you know, you go in front of the, the license board or anything, they say, okay, you need this permit. So if, instead of giving businesses a runaround, let's give them exactly what they need. Okay, you need 20 things, get this done, and you could um, start business in the city of Brockton. So a streamline, streamline businesses. Thank you. Um, and question for Dennis. Okay, this is, this is just a curious. Um, and this is not, you're not the only one that's always mentioned this. The financing for getting the streets paved. I mean, you think about all the streets in Ward 5, and you know, you, you had a fight to get two of them. I mean, I just picture you guys in the back room, you know, breaking them up at the city with the map and saying, oh, I get this, I get this, you know, you get the money. Well, what's the deal? Why does it? Why is it such a okay, deal? Okay, this is, this, is yeah. this is how the streets get paved in the city okay. of Rockton. We received Chapter 90 money from the state. This year, it was 1.5, and it just went to $2.5 million, okay? And the cost of the, the, uh, the asphalt runs about $125 a square foot. So how many streets can okay. you do for $2.5 million? I submit 10 streets a year. Okay. Every year I'm in office, I submit 10 streets to the mayor and the DPW commissioner. It goes in front of a committee that rates the streets on a one to 10 basis. Okay, so if I wanted to do Bud Avenue for Mr. Spears, and they, the DPW commissioner says, I'm gonna do Ashfield Drive instead, he loses out and I lose out because I wanted that street done. Sometimes I don't get to pick, but oh, one okay. out of the 10 will get done. Okay, thank you. I'm um, just doing a, a quick time check right now to see what we have left. We were doing this one for one Hour even, if possible. What do we have left of time? Huh? 15 minutes. Okay. Um, Ron, you had a couple of yes. yes and no questions, or maybe, well, I, I don't know I'd if like we have. I'd like to ask another question. Do we have time for? Uh, say that again, the time. I just want to make sure. Yeah. 15 minutes. Um, so yeah, but we got to stick to just the okay. one minute. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, the, uh, the budget that came down from the mayor's office this year it was uh, voted positively by most. 
uh, and that included uh, the two and a half percent, well, it was a little bit less than two and a half percent uh, property tax increase, and it could be less as the months go on, but it was passed. Uh, for the incumbent, uh, uh, Councilor Napoli can explain how he voted, and I'll ask the other candidates how they would have voted under those circumstances. Okay, so we'll start uh, with Councilor DiNapoli. So I get to go first. Well, yeah, yes. yeah. All right. probably well, only 30 seconds, too. Uh, well, okay, I, I, I did <laughs> vote. I voted, right. I voted no on that. Um, the, the reason why I voted no is that when I was uh, out and about in the, in the ward, I bumped into a lot of people out there, and things are tough, you know, and uh, some of the seniors can't afford a tax increase, and I felt that uh, at this particular time, uh, we should have uh, sent it back to the mayor for adjustments uh, to lower that, lower the tax rate. Now, you said that before that we could raise taxes two and a half percent. The levy has never been in this city raised at two and a half percent. It's always 1.4 to 1.7, okay, and that's where it falls. The tax levy at two and a half percent, if it ever got raised, you'd be paying another thousand dollars a year in your taxes, which would, will never happen. Thank you, Ollie. Yes, this time um, he voted against it. But my opinion, I would have voted against it also. Um, and it's a lot of people hurting and struggling. So definitely no on tax raise. And no on raising, um, giving people raises to department heads. Ann? Well, to be honest with you, I, part of me would have abstained. Because I believe part of the problem is we never see, the, and the community doesn't see the budget in a timely fashion to review it, assess it, question it. So I agree that people are struggling. I, uh, the stories that were presented in front of City Council that night were very, very distressing. But I also, I still want to know where the money is being spent, why, and how we can change the way it's being spent. So I would not have voted for the raises. So you're all so, three in agreement. Yes. Yes. Very good. Okay. Um, any follow-up to that? Can, can we? Can I just uh, rebuttal on that? Thirty seconds. Well, Thirty seconds, real yeah. quick. Okay. The city of Brockton right now has over two hundred and sixty million dollars in bonds. Okay. Sorry. Outstanding bonds. We we rebuilt the waste treatment plant for millions. We have new schools that we have to pay for. We just put new roofs, new windows in the in the junior highs in the high school. Retirement fund we gave money to and the insurance fund. Those are, are all uh, outstanding bonds that the city is floating. It's $260 million that we pay back every year. Uh, t uh, 30 seconds, in. Well, I, I'm actually very glad that we did work on the wastewater treatment facility. To me, that's an investment that other people can take advantage of, and that's I work closely with the Metro South Chamber of Commerce, once again, as I mentioned, and they have worked closely with elected officials to work on getting other communities to be able to take advantage of our wastewater treatment facility and get some revenue into this city. So that's an example of turning something around. Ollie? I'm all set. All set? Okay. We'll move right into closing statements, and uh, let me reset my clock so I have two minutes. Um, the order of the draw earlier in the evening was uh, the f first person to do the closing statement would be Ollie Spears. Like I said, on September 17th, I'm asking for your vote. I want you to go to the polls and voice your choice. I've been in Broughton all my life. I started when I was 16 years old with our positive policy, even before that, changing and helping the community. I have always been part of the community, I've always been a person that helps the community. And like I said, on September 17th, I'm asking for your voice, I mean asking for your vote, I, um, for accountability, for accessibility, work with neighborhood associations, working with the neighborhoods and creating neighborhood associations for we get more pride in our communities, enhancing some of the neighborhood watches, um, street by street, neighbor by neighbor. So, like I said, September 17th, I'm asking for your vote for be the next Ward 5 city councilor, and I'll represent you to the fullest. Thank you. Okay, you still have time. Are you good? All set. Okay. Short and sweet. Okay. Uh, next would be Dennis DiNapoli. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Ron, and thank you, Brockton Community Access, for having this debate, forum, whatever you want to call it tonight. And, uh, my record speaks for itself. 14 years as your current city councilor, 
My concerns are your concerns. I'm available full-time. I ran in 2000 to be a full-time city councilor. I only work part-time, so I'm available anytime to donate to meet anybody. I'm involved 44 years in, in Ward 5. I'm a resident and taxpayer and a volunteer. Dedicated to improve Ward 5, making it a, 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 a safer place to work and play. I'm asking for your vote on September 17th. Please vote for Dennis DiNapoli. Councilor Ward 5. Thank you, Ron, and thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Uh, Ann. Well, first of all, thanks, everyone, from uh, BCA and uh, Ron and Mark for hosting this this evening. And I'm asking for your vote on September 17th. I believe that uh, my experience, my education, and my participation in the community over the years have demonstrated my compassion, my desire, and my sacrifices for wanting to improve this community. I am not afraid to learn. I am not afraid to work with others in the community I have had. I have had over the years. I believe in bringing institutions of higher learning and their talented individuals. The community itself, I believe that people don't need to be handpicked to be part of groups, commissions, and other um, activities that uh, affect the community and itself and the, um, the, the, the governing, governing aspect of, of the community. And I could you know, cite various examples. I'm a strong proponent of including the city. I mentioned before the image of the city comes from people participating in the city. Last year we had a huge event to recognize Rocky Marciano. Hundreds of thousands of people heard about Brockton in a positive light. Uh, we have a tower up at uh, the, the um, be beginning of this city here for uh, DW Field Park, uh, a national historic site. We have individuals that are recognized. Uh, just recently I was on Cape Cod. Wasn't there an article about Lou Colombo, the late Lou Colombo, a great jazz musician that was part of this community. There are people making this community absolutely terrific every day. Nothing's perfect anywhere and nothing will ever be perfect but it's a demonstration of how people's commitment and compassion like I believe that I've been committed to this community and I'm committed to the betterment of it it's not that things can't be better it's things and how to bring them and make them better I can be reached at 508-584-6919 and uh, greenbeachab at yahoo.com please be part of the positive of the community Time. and vote for me on uh, September 17th thank you okay well that wraps up the debate uh, I'm going to allow Ron some final thoughts and then I will will in the end of the debate. Well, both uh, BCA and WXBR Radio believe that you need to make the proper choice and you need to vote on September 17th. It's important that this is not just a sampling of votes, but it is a mandate of votes. So please uh, participate. It's the least that you can do on September 17th. Uh, we are both uh, committed, Thank both uh, media factions, to educate you as best as possible on all the races involved. Well, and I'd like to echo Ron's comments and thank uh, all three of the candidates for your willingness to participate. I think this is important public information. That's our role here, both of us, to keep the public informed. And uh, any of you would be a credit to uh, being an elected official whether it be the incumbent counselor or the challengers. I thank you for participating, and I thank my staff and crew. Stay tuned for more election coverage on Brockton Community Access and WXBR. We're going to be partnering up for the election as well, and we will uh, be back with uh, uh, mayor's debate and also the Ward 7 city council debate. Thanks for watching.